Then we're team build trends and we're taking on challenge number five, looking at material price tracking. And the challenge is whether we can create a tool that allows us to track the price trends of key materials. And we've taken steel, concrete, copper and currency fluctuations as this challenge. And the idea is to help us to uh, predict inflation, inflationary measures on um, project costs more easily and more transparently and to use machine learning to identify trends. And then the output is a, a web scraping tool to scrape uh, prices from the internet and then a dashboard to display these prices um, and be able to visualize the trends over time and then a plan to deploy this solution to a production environment. So we approach this problem by first developing in uh, Python code to web scrape from several different sources on the internet. And we plan to implement these web scraping codes daily so that we regularly have updated information. Um, we then also developed a machine learning code using a time series prediction to forecast future prices for the key materials that we're looking at. And we collated all this data together in a dashboard using Power BI so that we could visualize and plot trends of data and our future predictions. For this challenge, we scraped two sets of data, metal prices, copper and steel, from the London Metal Exchange to be used by the machine learning algorithm, and construction tools and their higher price from Premier Plant Hire to be fed to Power BI for further processing. For the metal prices, we took the sidebar available on LME's webpage, scraped it, put the data into a pandas data frame, and then split and exported the data pertaining to each metal into its own CSV file. For the constructions tools, we again took the sidebar available on Premier Plant Hire's website. The HTML code on the right shows that each submenu entry has a link to the tool category specific web page. The scraper searches for the UL tag containing the the submenu class and then returns a list of all the URLs containing within the A tags. This can then be fed to Power BI for further processing. A full explanation and illustration of the code can be found in our web scrapers and their story Jupyter notebook. When it comes to price prediction, we started the process by an initial an analysis of the historical data. And as you can see, after the 21st century, the price of copper has increased significantly. The data also exhibits a trend, which is one of the factors that we had to take account into in order to conduct the time series analysis. The pre-processing of the data started by separating uh, it into three parts that consist of trend, seasonality, and residual. And as you can see on the residual, residual graph uh, at the bottom, it shows the shock that happened during the 2008 financial crisis. In order to find the best parameters that works for each data set, we had to calculate the autocorrelation, which shows how much each month is related to the previous one. The data was turned into stationary data by removing both the trend and seasonality factors. After definition in the data by a factor of one, the data become more stable and the trend had a mean of zero. So we're ready to implement the model. As we can see, the shaded area was used as training set. We did not account the prices of Cooper before 2002 due to the drastic change in the industry. And zooming in the recent year, we predict the price three years after today. The red line showed the price will slightly raised, and the gray part is the potential of adding confidence interval to Cooper. And as a last step, we conducted model validation to make sure models are a good fit and that we were able to predict future prices with accuracy. One of the examples is a graph on the bottom left, the QQ plot, proving that residual is following a normal distribution. We then applied the aforementioned process to concrete and steel data. However, please note that due to time constraint, we were not able to find the best data set, as well as optimizing the parameters used in the models. The potential of this model is unlimited. However, we have to make sure the issue of data is solved before going to the next step, as well as implementing future data as like S&P 500, inflation, and interest rates. And lastly, other machine learning techniques like neural network could be implemented in the future.
So this is our Power BI dashboard that we developed to showcase the data that we've web scraped and our own predicted model. Here you can see a trend of past data along with our future prediction for prices of key components. This card here calls out the current price and highlights it with a rag status depending on value for money. We also call out predicted price in set intervals and price changes over a certain period. This is repeated for other materials such as concrete and steel. Labour data then is used to compare la labour rates across the UK uh, for different fields. And we also have plant data to look at the cost of key plant for project. So we would recommend that Gleeds host this solution on Azure and Power Automate for the web scraping element. Um, they can use this by setting up a Power Automate flow that will ensure that web scraping is completed daily and, and the information that is then scraped can be stored within a SharePoint list which can be appended to each day and linked directly to Power BI. The machine learning code we run directly within the Power BI itself so that's performed in the Power Query and then this Power BI can be stored on the Power BI server with an automated refresh daily to ensure the data is always up to date. Um, so for unusual activity, when it comes to the financial crisis, for example, we smoothed out residuals already for all the materials. Uh, for COVID-19, however, however, when it comes to steel and concrete, there's actually no need to do anything because our analysis show that the pressing res residuals are very consistent. But for copper, there, it has a name of Dr. Copper, where it pretty much goes along the lines of, of economic activity. So we think that because because of that relationship, we shouldn't we shouldn't really change much data just because of how how much copper is related to actual activity in in the real world. And for the last question, uh, we believe that the data we have are not just merely snapshots in time. We do have a consistent ten year data, ten year monthly data. And when it comes to new data. We believe that if, say, we start from zero today, we need about a year of data to get to a point that we can do time series analysis because of seasonality. Um, however, since we already have um, historical data, any new data that comes in within one day, we can start doing a new time series analysis from the historical data and adding the new data from today.